Holy names of Jesus and be blessed. Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, today we now have another great Franciscan saint. This week we have been concentrating on the Holy Passion. Remember Monday was the, the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Then we had the sorrows, the seven sorrows, the Blessed Virgin Mary. We remained on the cross yesterday, transfixed and stigmated with St. Francis. Today we have another great Franciscan who had a great love of the Holy Cross. He's called the Flying Saint. Today we celebrate the great feast of St. Joseph of Cupertino, most known and famous for levitating at prayer. Already as a child, Joseph showed his fondness for prayer. After a short career with the Capuchins, he joined the conventual Franciscans. Following a brief assignment, caring for the friary mule, Joseph began his studies for the priesthood. Though studies were very difficult for him, Joseph gained a great deal of knowledge from prayer and he was ordained in the year 1628. Joseph's tendency to levitate during prayer was sometimes a cross. We know this great story. Once he went to see the, the Pope at the time. The Pope couldn't see him. He was levitating in the the roof and the Pope told us where he was. He looked up and told him to come down and in his great zeal and obedience he came down from his flight directly. Some people came to see this levitation, levitation for him as some kind of a, a circus sideshow. But Joseph's gifts led him to be most humble, patient and obedient. Even though at times he was greatly tempted and felt forsaken by the living God, he fasted and wore iron chains for most of his life. The friars transferred Joseph several times for his own good and for the good of the rest of the community. He was reported to and investigated by the Inquisition. The examiners exonerated him, and Joseph was canonized in the year 1767. In the investigation preceding the canonization, 70, 70 incidents of levitation are recorded. We know well this great saint is the one who was a genius. He was regarded as a simpleton. He had a very um, poor childhood and he struggled with his education. But one time a bishop, we remember, came to speak to him and he proceeded to unfold the doctrine of the Blessed Trinity to the bishop who didn't understand the theology. Simply put, Joseph of Cabotino folded a towel into three pleats and said, this is the three distinctions and we have the unity in the whole material. Also, Saint Joseph, as we know, is called the patron saint of students. Why? Because in his simplicity, he only learned for his studies for the priesthood one passage of the scripture. He was mixing with some very high intellectuals who were, were ridiculing him. They went to the exam at that time with the bishop to pass for the priesthood, for ordination, and some of these intellectuals failed the exam, but what happened to Saint Joseph? He was tested on the very passage of scripture he knew. He's the patron saint of students, so many times also in our experiences, friars, when you haven't, through no fault of your own, have the time to, to deepen your studies and, and make um, a more profound um, period of examination in, on the material, we pray to St. Joseph Cupertino, and lo and behold, nearly all the times we are asked on those passages and those sections of the material that we know. So if you're a student watching this, then if you're struggling for time, pray for the grace to receive the answers through the intercession of this great saint today, Saint Joseph of Cupertino. What about the great devotion then we want to unfold of this saint to the Blessed Virgin Mary? His day would be occupied with the recitation of the Divine Office. 
the official prayer of the church, the entire rosary, spiritual reading, two hours of meditation, and many other devotional prayers. Late in the evening, he would secretly go to the basilica to pray before the tomb of St. Francis or the Blessed Sacrament, or before an in the Blessed Virgin Mary until midnight. He celebrated Mass every morning after they have gone to confession, every day. Mass usually lasted two hours with Joseph Cupertino, although on the more common feasts it could, could go on and durate as long as five hours. Five hours. Why was this the case? Because it was during the Mass that God revealed to Joseph his divine powers. He flew, he fell, he danced, and he wept. These happenings had a precise meaning for Joseph. As he meditated upon the presence of Christ in the host during the Mass, he found that he was unable to elevate the host. When he found difficulty in breaking the host, he knew it was because there was somebody nearby in the state of serious sin. If during an ecstasy he fell to the ground, it meant that he had been he had seen the offended face of Christ. These special graces given to Saint Joseph of Cupertino were the result of a divine love which burned in his heart and showed how united his soul was to God. The saint expressed himself in the following manner. These are his beautiful words, dear brothers and sisters of Christ. He said, I want to love and serve God. I don't want to be cured of loving and serving him. I don't serve God for the sake of heaven, nor out of the fear of hell, but for God himself, because we know God is lovable in himself. Joseph said that after this, he had been to the doctor due to the pains in his chest, and it appeared that his ribs had spread apart because of his strong and burning love for the Lord. One priest, after coming from a conversation with Joseph, is recorded as having said, he is perfectly united to God and his heart is more disposed to this union than powder is to be ignited by the smallest spark. This union found expression in Joseph's continual life of prayer. It seemed that he was able to raise his spirit to God with little effort and he always found God ready to inspire him and enlighten him and to draw him ever closer to himself. Remember many episodes when you just had to mention the words Jesus and Mary or something holy and Joseph would take flight in ecstasy. It was with this lively faith and firm trust in God that he was able to spend so much time in praying for others. This is his great charity. He would entreat, entreat the faithful to trust in God alone. He assured them that God would provide them with what they needed. He never failed. We have already seen some cases in which Joseph's intercession was effective, but what about some other ones? At one time, Cupertino was in danger in the place. Cupertino was in danger of being struck by a severe storm, but through his prayers, the hurricane ceased. On another occasion, Joseph's intercession by his intercession, the doctor was able to pass by without being noticed by six assassins who sought to attack and rob him on his way home to Assisi. It was as if the doctor had become invisible through the power of the prayer of Joseph of Cupertino. Another time, the minister of the order was saved from drowning when he sought the intercession of Saint Joseph. The minister general was riding alone on his mule when it became startled and fell from a bridge. The priest felt he would surely die, but through Joseph's intercession, he was able to escape unharmed. St. Joseph said later that he saw the priest danger in the danger of his fall as he was celebrating the Holy Mass, and therefore he prayed for his safety. Joseph was also had the gift of bilocation. He was able to appear one place, more than one place at the same time. On one occasion, while he was still in Assisi, he was seen in the little church of 
Grotella, where he went into ecstasy and disappeared. This is the greatness of Saint Joseph. What can we say then about this Saint Joseph in his beautiful devotion, which was extraordinary to the Blessed Virgin Mary? He attributed all the benefits that he received from God to Mary's intercession. He would call Mary his mother and adorn her images with flowers. His heart belonged to her, and this is apparent from his continued prayers, which he recited in her honor. He would call the Blessed Virgin Mary, these beautiful words, the, his protectress, the lady, patroness and mother and helper. He would often sing simple and joyful songs to her. As I said before, many people in these saints that we see, such as St. Joseph and St. Maximilian Kobe, St. Faustina, their contemporaries or the friars or the sisters regarded them as being crazy, but they were crazy in love with, for Jesus and Mary. He would experience St. Joseph frequent ecstasies and flights when he saw her image, Our Lady, or heard her name. In fact, his greatest flight was recorded on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception in the year 1642. The Franciscans, since the foundation of the order, have always placed this great devotion to Our Lady and her Immaculate Conception. This is the day he took his great flight, Saint Joseph. He would encourage people's love for Mary by exhorting them to give their hearts and wills to her. This is what she desired above all. He even said, my mother, the Virgin Mary, is odd. If I bring her flowers, she tells me that she doesn't want them. If I bring her roseberries, she also doesn't want them. Then I asked her, Blessed Virgin Mary, then what do you want? And she answered me, I want flesh. And when I insisted, what kind of flesh? She answered, the flesh of your heart, for I do not feed but on hearts. Joseph hoped that Mary would be loved and praised not only by the angels and by the saints, but by all the people on the earth. He would ask the people who had been cured or who had received favors not to thank him, for it was not the result of his prayer, but it was through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin and Heavenly Mother. For it was through her that they had been cured and their requests had been granted. Joseph stated his love of God began with his devotion and love of Mary. In dying, he invoked her with these beautiful words, Ave Mara Stella, show thyself a mother, offer him our sighs, for for us incarnate did not thee despise. Let us imitate then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in conclusion, this saint, for his ardent love of Jesus crucified and Mary Immaculate, so that one day we will also fly interiorly with the names of Jesus and Mary on our lips at our final moment on our deaths bed. Let us fly to paradise and leap into the arms of our most perfect and sublime mother, so that we can be with Saint Joseph Cupertino and on the heavenly choirs to adore the most holy trinity forever and ever. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.